Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the technology that is used in our data warehouse. And we first need to talk about relational databases because this is where usually our data warehouse is housed. So therefore let's have a closer look at these relational databases and what the role of those databases is for our data warehouse. So a relational database is basically just a database. That means we store data in tables. They are also called relations in relational databases. And that means that we have just our data structured into columns and rows. So this is not very spectacular. And we use SQL usually. This is the language that is used to query the data. That means that we want to see and return this data in our interface or in our application. And this is a very natural sounding language. So for example, we can use the statement select then the columns that we want to see from which table. So it's a very natural sounding language and it's also not so complicated to learn, but don't worry, we don't want to make this into a SQL course. But now what is specific about these relational databases is that we can use keys and put these tables into relations. But now let's understand how this works. So usually in a table, we have a primary key. The purpose of this primary key is to uniquely identify every single row in our table. And for that, we use the column that is our primary key. And this column then therefore needs to contain only unique values. We cannot have any duplicates and we cannot have any null values. So with that, if we know the ID number, for example, five, we know exactly which row is meant. And then aside to these primary keys, we can also have multiple foreign keys. And the purpose of those foreign keys is to reference another table. So they contain the values from a primary key of another table. So for example, in this case, it can be the customer table. And with these values, we can now reference rows in other tables. Because we remember this primary key is uniquely identifying every single row. And therefore, if we know that this is a two in this first row, we can go to this table and we know exactly this row here is meant. So therefore, we will then have Sarah in this column here. So like this, we can add these columns from other tables and put them into our table in our queries. So we can write queries and these are joints that we use to combine multiple tables. Again, we don't want to make this into a SQL course, but it's enough to know that we can use joints to combine results of multiple tables using primary and foreign key. And now you might think that this is again not so spectacular, but in fact this was a complete game changer for data analysis. And there was a lot of time in fact spent to build this logic, to develop the algorithms and there was a lot of struggle with getting a good performance for that. And they were spent almost two decades to get a query performance that people can actually work with this data and that there was enough acceptance to be able to query this in a reasonable amount of time. And the game changer was now that traditionally we used the data in operational systems. So we just queried usually data from one table and we were just editing single values, updating single values, entering values. And now with this possibility of putting tables into relations, we can now get a lot more context and combine multiple tables. And this was then enabling and advancing a lot more analysis. So this was the advancement of OLAP. And now this was also closely connected this rise of relational databases with the rise of data warehouses. Because now we can organize our data in multiple tables, we can bring them into relation and now really analyze our data. 
And we'll later see how we model these tables, these different tables. So we do this using so-called star schemas, but we'll learn more about that later on. And before we move on to the next technology that also plays a role in a data warehouse, we want to just quickly see the different products that are used for relational databases. So these products that I'm talking about is the relational database management systems. So we have seen that we have used PostgreSQL for that. So this is just the system that is used to manage those databases. And in enterprises, there is commonly used Oracle or Microsoft SQL Server, but there are also open source alternatives such as PostgreSQL or MySQL. And nowadays, of course, there are also some cloud services such as Amazon relational databases or Azure SQL databases. So this is also nowadays, of course, possible and used in companies. But now that we've talked about relational databases, there are also so-called in-memory databases because they are nowadays getting more and more important and therefore in the next lecture we want to learn about those in-memory databases.